This is the Pipeline Podcast, where you'll get to know the next generation of Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's see who's coming down the pipeline today with your host, Dylan Tyre. Welcome to the Pipeline Podcast. Great to have you back with me after last time, remember, we talked with Blue Jackets prospect and Cleveland Monsters forward Tyler Angle. This week, no pun intended, we're going to take a little bit different of an angle. We are going to talk to a guy that we never have before. This player has been in the Blue Jackets organization for a couple of years now. He was drafted in the third round, 78th overall in the 2020 NHL entry draft. But this is the first time we'll have ever talked to him on the Pipeline podcast, and that is Slovakian defenseman Samuel Kanashko. A little bit about Samuel. He stands at six foot one, 190 pounds. He's a left shot defenseman from Slovakia, so pretty good size, pretty good build to him. 19 years old, so plenty of time to uh, continue to fill out his big frame as well. And he's had quite the path this season. He started off playing in the men's league in Finland, Liga, pro hockey over there. He is Slovakian, like I mentioned, but he played a couple years of junior in Finland, then graduated to the pro game this season, played one game there, then made the jump to North America, where he's now playing with the Seattle Thunderbirds of the Western Hockey League. But even though they're pretty deep into their season, he hasn't played a lot for them because he's been featured a ton on the international stage for Team Slovakia this season. He first started off playing in the World Junior, where he was Team Slovakia's captain. Second straight year, he has been the captain of Team Slovakia at the World Junior. But remember, this year's World Junior was unfortunately canceled after just a couple of games due to COVID concerns. But after that, Samuel got the call to be part of the men's international team, Team Slovakia, going to the Winter Olympics in Beijing. And he was part of something special there. For the first time in the nation of Slovakia's history, they took home a hockey medal winning bronze at those Beijing Winter Olympics. So a terrific path for Samuel this season. But right now he's back in the WHL, back with Seattle, and he's got two goals and seven assists for nine points in 15 games this season. So all things considered, good numbers for a defenseman, especially a defenseman that's playing the North American game for the very first time. So what we're going to cover in this interview is first and foremost being drafted by the Blue Jackets, his path to, you know, becoming a pro hockey player or or prospectively a pro hockey player, but his path to being drafted, the process of being drafted by the Blue Jackets. Then we're going to move on to talk about making that leap to the North American game. And then, of course, we've got to talk about his play on the international stage this season because that is really, really impressive and very important. And then later on in the interview, we're going to talk with Blue Jackets development coach Derek Dorsett. He's the guy that's communicating with Samuel Kanashko on behalf of the organization. So we've got a ton to get to in this interview. But before we get into it, I just want to say I love Samuel Kanashko. I had never talked to him before, but he had a smile on his face the minute he hopped on screen, hopped on the interview with me. Really energetic, really kind, really fun to talk to. So I hope you guys enjoy this interview as much as I did. Without further ado, here he is, Blue Jackets prospect Samuel Kanashko. All right, Samuel, let's start somewhere very, very simple. You're from Slovakia, so how did you get into the game of hockey in the first place? Was it a family thing for you, or was it just something that you tried out? It was kind of kind of funny because uh, when I'm going to school, so uh, the ring was uh, on, on my way to school. So it was like I've been all around the ring uh, all the time. So once uh, I just go, I just went to the ring and uh, one lady just asked me if I want to start playing hockey. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll try it. And they just uh, borrow me the, the stuff. And uh, then I, on the, on the other day, I just uh, started to play hockey. And uh, now I'm here probably. Wow. So at what point in your career did you realize that this is really something you could do and maybe make a career out of? Uh, probably when I was like 10 years old, because uh, then I just uh, I just realized, uh, OK, this is my life and this is what I, I want to do. And uh, I can't imagine do anything else. So I was like it was like a switch point when when uh, I realized, OK, this is, I should take it serious from the young age and uh, then uh, I, I have to continue with, with that way. So how old were you when you started playing then? Uh, I was six years old. All right. So only it took you only four years and you were pretty in love with hockey and taking it pretty seriously, right? Oh, oh yeah, that, that's right. Uh, I wasn't that good at the start of the, my career when I was seven or eight, but then it starts getting better and better. And, I, and then I just realized, okay, maybe 
I can try to develop myself and, uh, you know, take it, take the thing seriously. Did you start watching the NHL at that point? Were you watching highlights or was it mostly European hockey that you were getting into? First of all, I was starting watching at the Olympics uh, 2010 when uh, Slovakia was formed with a lot of NHL players. And uh, then I get into it uh, a little more. And then, uh, you know, the NHL in the Europe is uh, at night about 2 a.m. So it was kind of hard to hard to watch. But uh, I was watching highlights and uh, stuff like that uh, on the social media. But uh, at the time uh, when I get older and older, I... I try to watch more hockey when there was a good time for that. So, um, yeah, I try to do, I try to watch a lot, but uh, there was no, not too many chances for that. Were there pro players that you really admired when you were young that helped you fall in love with the game of hockey or was it just kind of you liked playing and that's why you played? There was a lot of guy I look up to, for example, now on the Olympics, our goalkeeper, Brian Salconrad, uh, when I was younger, he was playing uh, in my home t- hometown team. So uh, it was kind of nice to meet him. And uh, just I was saying to him, OK, you're, you're my idol. And now I'm here with you in, in the same room. And it was, it was just like dream come true, probably. And uh, of course, uh, there, there was a lot, a lot of hockey players, for example, Paolo Demitra and uh, Zdeno Chara and a lot of other players. So your idol growing up was a goaltender. Did you ever try out to play goalie? Oh, uh, not at all. But uh, at the time, he was pretty good, and he was in the national team also. So I I look up to him, and uh, I like him a lot because he was a really nice goalkeeper, and just uh, the way he, the way he, you know, he was so funny, and uh, I was was just enjoy. I was just enjoying to watch him. Were you always a defenseman, or when did you make the switch? Uh, I was always defenseman. Uh, I didn't want to be a forward, but uh, I tried to be like a more offense, uh, offensive defenseman, and uh, it just stick with me all the time. And uh, you know, I didn't try to switch switch the things because I think it was unnecessary to do that. What about players that you watch nowadays? Are there guys in the NHL that you look up to now and maybe try and model your game after a little bit? Uh, of course, I'm watching a lot of players, uh, especially like the Slovak guys. Uh, but uh, for example, like Kel Makar and uh, you know uh, Victor Hedman, Eric Carlson. Kar- so uh, there was a lot of hockey players. But uh, you know, I try to watch all of them because every- everyone is a good uh, in other ways. So I try to not stick with only one player, but a couple more. Tell me about being drafted by the Blue Jackets. It happened a couple of years ago for you. Did you have any idea, first of all, that you were going to be drafted? And did you have any idea that it was going to be the Blue Jackets picking you? They called me like two days before the draft, like, uh, okay, we have a really interest in you and uh, just good luck in the in the draft, they told me. But uh, I didn't know they're going to pick me up. And uh, and I was watching the draft and it was, uh, they were they were on the line and uh, uh, it went like two minutes. Uh, I was two minutes behind. So then just my phone blown up like, uh, all right, congrats. And I was like, okay, but what's happening? And, uh, and then they just picked me up. So I was just pretty happy. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it was kind of funny. So what were the emotions after that? What was the celebration like? And who did you get your first call from, from the Blue Jackets organization? Who let you know? Uh, it was probably GM uh, Jarmo Kekalainen and then of course my family and uh, friends and just uh, a couple of my friends but the uh, celebration wasn't that uh, that high because uh, I was in Finland with uh, one, uh, one of my friends like Slavkovsky and uh, we just went to the shop and uh, then I just stopped stopped him like okay this is getting serious like everybody's texting me like I was drafted because the draft was so long it it took like three hours to get to third round and uh, then we said okay we're gonna go to the shop and uh, then I just stopped him and I just said okay I'm drafted and (laughs) then we just celebrate a little bit but uh, on the other day we had a uh, game or practice so it was not a big deal. You mentioned Slavkovsky there. Is this the same Slavkovsky that's going to be a high draft pick in this year's draft and was uh, the MVP of the Olympics? Oh, yeah. We, we live with, with each other in uh, Turku, so we are pretty good friends. And uh, hopefully the Columbus can draft him, probably. There is some chance. 
Yeah, I was going to say, are you, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the Olympics later on, but I was going to say, are you hoping that the Blue Jackets are able to uh, pick him up at some point in the first round? Obviously, you want to see the Blue Jackets do well, but there yeah. is uh, the chance that the Blue Jackets get a couple of high draft picks. So the chance is there, right? Oh, yeah, for, for sure. Like, it would be just even even better when one of my friends, so for example, Slavkovsky or Niemets would be drafted to Columbus, you know, is the, always the nice thing. Uh, to have some some friends over there from from Slovakia or for example for, from Czech or especially in Europe and uh, you know would be happy for for me and also for them and uh, I think they are both great players and uh, would be a great addiction to the Blue Jackets. With Slovakia in mind, tell me you know what the path is to playing pro hockey over there. You know from when you're a young kid up until you're playing professionally in Europe and then eventually making the jump to North America like you have this season to Seattle. What's that whole process like? Uh, it's like in uh, also in Czech and uh, Finland and Sweden, there is U18 uh, league and U20 league, and then you're going to the pros. And uh, there is the same in Slovakia. Like uh, you go first, uh, like uh, the first big step is U18 league and then you just go to the U20 and uh, if you are good enough, you are going to make it to the pro league and uh, at 17 years old, you are drafted uh, to the CHL if you are lucky or if you are interested in that. So uh, there's a turning point when you are deciding if you want to go to the North America or uh, stay in the Europe or... Uh, just some other way but uh, this is the like a two best option for the europe europe players to get drafted so how did you make that decision because you know you played professionally in finland you played a game this season but then you decided to make the jump to seattle so how did that happen for you uh there was a lot like a lot of a lot of things all around and uh, i just decided with columbus that it's going to be way better to c come here to seattle and uh you know battling for the battling for the championship and get top four minutes uh top four demon minutes in the like uh, in the team and uh you know just be a big part like playing power play penalty killing and five on five a lot and uh, have a big ice time and just develop myself in the smaller ring and so we just say during the season that okay this is going to be way better way better for me and uh, probably for everybody else and that's that's how the decision went yeah, so just a better chance to develop for you, right? More ice yeah, time, right. more situations on the ice, just all around a better chance for you to develop. What's that transition been like for you living in the United States for the first time and experiencing the North American lifestyle? Oh, uh, well, I live with, my, with uh, one of the families and one of my teammates, so it was kind of nice to uh, adapt here. But I wasn't here too long because then I went to the U20s and then uh, after a couple couple of weeks I went to the Olympics so I wasn't here too much but uh, now hopefully I'm going to be here pretty long and uh, just adapt way, way more just to get going and uh, you know it's kind of simple we just went we just going to the ring and uh, back home and just uh, hang out with some of the friends go shopping and just a normal life nothing nothing too serious. Yeah, that's a good point. You've had a lot going on this season. As of this mm. recording, you've only played 13 games in the WHL, but you've been there for a while just because yeah. you had the chance at the World Juniors and then you went and played in the Olympics with Team Slovakia. What does it mean to you, though? Only 13 games in, you're already wearing a letter. You're wearing an A as one of the captains for the Seattle Thunderbirds. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it means a lot because when I came from the Olympics, I feel like uh, I should be a leader for, uh, in the team. And, uh, of course, our captain is uh, injured, so we have uh, four A's. Uh, so I was pretty happy when they put it on my jersey. And, uh, you know, I tried to be a leader on and off the ice, of course, and just uh, get the experience from the Olympics or from the World Championship, what I experienced, uh, get going in the room and, you know, try to try to put it uh, to the other guys. Uh, and uh, you know, try to help them to develop also. With leadership in mind, you've had the opportunity to wear the C for Team Slovakia a couple of times at the World Juniors. Is leadership something that you take a lot of pride in? Are you a vocal leader or are you more of a lead by example type guy? Uh, I think uh, uh, I'm more like lead by example because I think I'm doing everything 100% and, you know, just try to act like a professional uh, sportman and just uh you know everything just doing uh 
right and uh, try to help the guys who are younger just to adapt because i know what it's like uh, to be like a young player in the team and uh, what they need to do and uh, what the team needs to be successful so i just think this is the right 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 way to you know um uh, get me and get them involved in the in the team so i i just i'm just enjoying that it's not a big deal because there you have a lot, a lot of leaders in the in the team so there is a, it, if you have a letter or not you just try to be a leader all the time if you are like that you mentioned earlier that you know you tried being an offensive defenseman but you prefer i guess being more of a stay at home type guy for blue jackets fans that are unfamiliar with your game and your style of play how would you describe yourself as a player uh well uh it's uh kind of tricky because uh, in the national team I got different role so it's more like uh, not stay at home but uh, just a more defensive uh, more defensive way I'm playing so uh, it's just like if I want to play in the national team I have to play the right way and what the coaches want from me and uh, you know here in the team I try to be uh, two-way D you know I, I know I can defend but I know I got the offensive upside my game so i can make the plays and i i think i'm a playmaker and uh i have a good, pretty good shot so i think uh, i can do both but uh i try i try to make an offense more here because i i know the coaches want it for me so your team captain of slovakia at the world juniors obviously that gets canceled and i'm sure that was devastating for all of your team not just you but then you get the call to be a part of the national team, the real big team, Team Slovakia going to the Olympics. How did that all happen? And what were your emotions when you found out? Well, I, I found out uh, in the morning because there is a, you know, big time difference between here and Slovakia. So I just woke up and uh, everybody was texting me like, congratulations for the Olympics uh, nomination. And uh, then I just... I just think in my my head like okay this is uh, probably the another chance to get the medal uh, because we had a really good chance to get it on the U20s but it just get cancelled and you know it was kind of nice when we actually win the bronze medal and uh, it was uh, you know like a dream come true because it's, it's not happening every year it's just every four years and uh, especially for the younger younger guys uh, like me and uh, other. Like, uh, it's a great start to the career, probably. So what was that experience like? You're obviously so young, playing in the Olympics, and you end up winning a medal. But before that happens, just take me through the tournament and what it was like to be playing against men and, in some cases, the best players in the world. Oh, well, it was so nice because uh, you don't play every, every day against them. And, you know, against Finland and uh, Sweden, there is, like, a lot of, ex NHL players who were playing in the long time in the NHL and it was nice to get going against them and you know just to see how they play and how how you can defend them or how just to get better when when you see them so it was kind of nice uh, especially uh, against Finland and uh, probably USA there was a lot, lot of young players also from the NCAA so it was it was a re really nice experience and uh, you know it just get getting just gets confidence when you winning the games and you you know that you can play against them it was kind of nice yeah what does it feel like coming back to the WHL having played in the Olympics against men and meddling there you have to have a lot of confidence and maybe it feels easier than when you first got there right oh uh, yeah for sure like uh, I feel like uh, I'm a little bit faster, like like now, and getting confidence, of course. But uh, you know, I just try to not think about that. Like, okay, I was in the Olympics, so now what? It just uh, I'm I'm the player on the team, and just try to be in the, you know the team player and uh, help help the team. But uh, I feel like I got a confidence right now, so I can make the things I could maybe do before. But uh, that's uh, that's a great great start to, to the like second half of the season. You're part of a team that makes history for Slovakia, winning the first ever medal in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. What did that mean to the team going into that game? Do you know what I mean? That maybe there was a lot, a lot of weight on your shoulders going into that bronze medal game. How important is it to go home with? Yeah, them? it was kind of important because uh, 
in the tw- uh, 2010 when they were fourth so they they lost uh lost it like four four three against Finland so we said to each other in the room that okay we we need to we need to win this game because uh, it's going to be so much fun to uh, go home and just to, to see people happy again especially in this covid situation when you just can't do probably anything and you just can't go to the games and uh, uh, we just make 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 the people and our country happy again and uh, you know the third place is for us like a gold because we never won the medal before and uh, it was just uh, after a f- couple of days we just realized okay we really done it and uh, it was uh, the first medal we just win so there was so much in- enjoying and so much uh, happiness in-, in the room what was the celebration like when you guys got back to Slovakia uh, there was a couple of photos uh, uh, there was like 20,000 people waiting on us when we came out of the plane and we just went to the bus and uh everybody was cheering for us and it was so much so much nice so nice to see the people you know re- reunited again and just cheering for us and like we were like heroes probably for them and uh, it just was so so nice to see see it again what does it mean to you to have done that for your country well, it means a lot, uh, for sure. Like, especially for my family and uh, friends who knows me. Like, they know I wanted, I wanted so much. Like, win the medal with the uh, Slovakia, even if it would would be yeah, like a U twenties or just right now the national team. So, uh, I wanted it so bad, and uh, hopefully we're gonna win the gold medal soon, and uh, it's gonna be even better. Yeah, hopefully you're an NHL player at that point too, right? And NHL players are going back to to the Olympics. That would be a great time. Yeah, it would be really great, but it's just a long way still. Yep, you're right. Tell me about Slavkovsky. You mentioned you're good buddies with him. Were you surprised by the performance he put on at the Olympics, or is that expected because he was a beast? Yeah, like I didn't expect he's going to score like seven goals and be the MVP, but uh, I know he's going to do a lot of great things. Like... uh, he he's done really really good national team, but he just couldn't go in, and uh, he just keeping it. Maybe he just kept it for for the Olympics and uh, just scored really nice goals. And uh, yeah, I didn't expect him to go this wild, but uh, it was just crazy. And he helped us win the win the win the medal for sure. Well, now that you've played a, a lot of hockey this season at different levels, what do you think you're trying to work on as you finish up the season in Seattle? As the second half begins and you're really trying to push for the playoffs, what are you individually working on? Probably just still my shot because I think my shot can be way better and uh, I can score more goals and, uh, you know, get a quicker li- release and, uh, you know, just uh, get the pucks to the net a little bit more and don't try to make the extra pass and I can be more successful with the, this way just to score more goals. As this season continues and as your WHL career continues, what are your goals as you hope to eventually, you know, be a pro here in North America and be a part of the Blue Jackets? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, the next year I would like to go to like the camp and if I'm not going to make the NHL, probably to the AHL would be the best place for me. And, uh, you know, I trust myself. I I trust um, my development, and I think it's going to be so exciting to see what's going to happen in a couple of years, maybe one or two years, and hopefully I'm going to be in NHL soon. Yeah, I hope so too, Samuel. That's all I got for you, man. I really appreciate the time. Thanks so much. And here's hoping that you and I can talk to each other face-to-face here, uh, maybe coming up this summer at development camp and then uh, at yeah. big camp uh, next season. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. You see what I mean there? He's just a fun guy, really happy guy. I'm so happy that we were able to get to know Samuel Kanashko this week on the Pipeline podcast. Really hope you enjoyed that interview. And really, after talking to Samuel, it made me more and more excited about him as a prospect. So I really am eager to meet him uh, coming up here in Columbus, hopefully, like I said, sooner rather than later. But why don't we hear what the Blue Jackets as an organization think about Samuel from development coach Derek Dorsett. He's done a lot of different things this season. Started off the year playing pro in Finland, made the jump to the WHL playing with Seattle, was in the Olympics and ended up winning a bronze medal there. So obviously uh, quite a year so far for Samuel Kanashko. But talk about him making the jump to the Western Hockey League. How did that happen? 
Yeah, you know, I think, you know, there's some different reasons and uh, why he came over to the Western Hockey League, but, you know, obviously getting over to North America and start to, to, to play the North American game was a, a big factor. And, you know, I think he's adapted pretty well. Uh, it's been a roller coaster for him uh, season-wise and travel-wise and cancellation-wise and just a lot of different things going on. But you know, I think he's played about 13 games now in the Western Hockey League and, and he's progressing uh, fairly well. I was just out there last uh, weekend to see him play. And, you know, he's a, he's a good young kid. You know, he's, uh, I think he's played, like I said, 13 games in the Western Hockey League and he's already wearing an, uh, an A on, on his jersey in Seattle. So it shows that he's a, a character kid. And, you know, he's been through a lot, you know, traveling, uh, you know, to North America, and, you know, jumping into a Seattle team that he, you know, in a city that he knows nothing about and uh, playing six or seven games and then going to the World Juniors to represent his country and, um, you know, then play a couple of games at the World Juniors, gets cancelled, and then he goes back to uh, Seattle and st starts to kind of get in a rhythm again and, and then gets a call to go, uh, you know, play on his... Uh, home country's team for the Olympics and ends up winning bronze medal and um, so it's been a roller coaster year for him but he's he's handled it great and uh, he's playing well and he's in a good situation in Seattle where he plays a lot of minutes so uh, looking forward to uh, following him a little more. You just uh, said you got back from Seattle got uh, the opportunity to see him play what were your first impressions of him as a player? He's a competitor uh, I think uh, you know he's a guy that you know wants the puck and um, offensively in the ozone as a d-man he he sees plays he makes plays and um it was a exciting game actually they were they were down three two with a, about a minute and a half left and they tied it up with the goalie pulled and then uh with like i think it was like 14 seconds left in the game uh, uh he scored he scored the goal he made a beautiful play at the at the blue line and and then he went to the net and got got the rebound and and scored and they won it with you know 11 seconds or something like that left in the game what about the type of person that he is? Did you have the opportunity to talk to him, get to know him a little bit? Yeah, you know, I, I was actually meaning to get out to Seattle when he when he first got out there, and then, you know, with him going to World Juniors and when he was going to play, and uh, you know, um, you know, he had to quarantine for a bit, and so I, I wanted to get out as quick as I could to meet him. And then with all the different schedules and changing, and then I went out to World Juniors and I watched him, and I was going to meet him at the end of the tournament at the World Juniors. And then obviously that uh, came crashing down and got cancelled. So I just actually finally got to meet him in, in person. He seems like a great, great kid. Communicating with him on the phone, very polite. And um, like I said, you know, he's a, obviously a high character kid. He, you know, captain of the World Junior Team for his country and uh, assistant captain for Seattle now. And um, you know, he's only been there really probably for a couple, three weeks, maybe a month. Uh, so it, it it shows that he's he's got a good good character yeah obviously very impressive there to already be wearing a letter you know not even 20 games into his tenure in the Western League and he's a guy that has a ton of world junior experience already I think he's a two-time captain for his world junior club and we mentioned it he just won a bronze medal playing in the Olympics what does that say about Canasco and and just the different experience that he's had that's got to be so beneficial for him right yeah for sure obviously then you know he's, he's played in Finland he's from Slovak and you know, there's some ups and downs there, and then he's come to the Western League, and he's on a good team in Seattle. So he's going to have a chance to, to make a good playoff push and, and get through the grind of, of a junior season, busting around and, and learning the North American game. And I think he's, like I said, I think he's in a great situation to, to develop. And, um, you know, it's nice that uh, Columbus has a nonstop flight there, so I'll be out there a, a few more times this year to keep tabs on him and help him wherever I can, you know, and just... Uh, you know, I, I've talked to their coaches. He's fitting in well. He's they, they love him there. They love his competitiveness. They they love how hard he works. So, um, a lot of positive things for Samuel. Mentioned the positives there. What are some of the things that you saw in his game, or you've heard from his coaches that he's continuing to work on as this season goes on? I think just like every uh, 18, 19 year old kid, they need to get you know stronger. You know, he's he's got big legs he's, he's he looks like he's pretty good strength but he just you know just like any other of our prospects they gotta you know be able to crank it up in the one-on-one -on -one battles and and be able to compete and and defend off the big boys because it's a whole nother step from um you know junior hockey but you know it's obviously a good sign too in the olympics he he competes with the big guys and the older guys so um 
you know, he's ahead of the game there. So we'll just keep keep tabs on him and make sure that, you know, he gets stronger and keeps progressing in the right way. What do you want to see him do the rest of this season in terms of, you know, development and what this organization wants from him, I guess, going forward? Yeah, obviously, you know, you, you want your guys to get confidence, you know, get confidence with that puck and being able to move the puck and being able to defend. Defending, in my opinion, you have to be able to play defense and and, and defend off the, the big guys. And, and I think, you know, just get that confidence in North America. It's a different style of game and, and just keep building from there. Again, that's Columbus Blue Jackets development coach Derek Dorsett talking about Blue Jackets prospect Samuel Kanashko. Just a really great conversation there, and I feel like I always say that, but I mean it. First and foremost, I love talking to Samuel. I felt like I learned a ton about him, and now I'm very excited about him as a prospect. And then I always enjoy the organizational perspective on these prospects. Derek Dorsett, of course, just saw Samuel Kanashko play, so a great time to talk to him about the prospect. And I hope you get the feeling now that you know a little bit more about what the Blue Jackets as an organization think about seeing so with all that in mind that'll do it for this week's edition of the pipeline podcast like to say thank you again to both samuel and Derek, and as always thank you for joining me this week can't wait to do it again next time